I'd like to get started here for everybody. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to our 33rd Annual Beautification Commission Award Ceremony. Thank you for coming to help us recognize beautification efforts in the city of Farmington Hills. Uh, your program states our purpose, as well as the current commission members who are all community enthusiasts. I'd like to introduce them and I'd like you to recognize them as they stand when I call their name and some are at the welcome table. We have Kathy Brown, <laughs> Jennifer Chin, <laughs> Elsie McEwen who can't be here tonight, Catherine Massey, Betty Poole, she's over here, Carol Posby, and Rita Roberts, and I'm Carol. Valerie Knoll is our account city council liaison. I know she's here somewhere. Oh, she had to go. Um, and she regularly attends our meetings. She's a big asset to us. Last April, we held the sixth Community Litter Walk or Cleanup Day to help promote litter control with 17 subdivisions and 150 people participating. We tied this project into the existing Earth Day in April, National Arbor Day, and Keep Michigan Beautiful statewide cleanup program. At the Hills Earth Day activity at, Her <coughs> excuse me, at Heritage Park, our chair, uh, Carol Posby, was there representing our commission and uh, promoting our program. Our successful and popular spring and fall plant swaps were again held at Heritage Park in May and in September this year. We were awarded our Tree City designation by the Arbor Day Foundation for the 10th year. And you can see some of those signs as you travel through the city. In June, the commission sponsored uh, annual flower uh, planting at the Caustic Center and in their courtyard. And uh, this year, we had a co cooperation with after school students. During the project, gardening was demonstrated and community volunteering was encouraged. The Beautification Commission is a member of the statewide organization, Keep Michigan Beautiful. We are also a charter member of the Regional Beautification Council of, <clears throat> of Southeastern Michigan. We fondly call that the BCSEM. By that group, we are invited to attend quarterly meetings uh, in other southeastern Michigan communities to learn about their beautification and community programs. Serving on the Beautification Commission is very fulfilling, and we welcome new members. Come to one of our meetings at City Hall on the third Tuesday of the month at 6 p.m to see if you would like to join us. If you have questions, please feel free to speak to any of the commission members that are here tonight. And now, moving along in our program, I would like to introduce you to our Farmington Hills City Manager, Mr. Dave Boyer. It's nice. She said good job before I even walked up here. Um, welcome everybody tonight to the Caustic Center. First off, thanks the Caustic Center staff um, for putting this together tonight and uh, the wonderful dinner. But my job tonight is to, to introduce the mayor. Before I do that, I would like to thank the Beautification Commission. This is the 33rd annual award ceremony. Great work by everybody. Charmaine is our liaison and we left her out in that. And thank you for all the work you do, Charmaine. I'd also like to thank all the award winners tonight. Um, 
it's, it's the work that you would do in our community that enhances our community and it makes people proud when they drive down the streets, whether it's your business, your neighborhood, or your house. Um, we appreciate everything that you do. This time, I would like to introduce our mayor, Dr. Ken Massey. Good evening, everyone. And I, it is uh, my pleasure to be here with you tonight. The 33rd Annual Beautification Awards, honestly, having this event and thinking about our city, which has only been a city for 45 years, we take beautification seriously. And the commission members currently and those that were preceding them, obviously, this is an important aspect. Past and present, we, we, we have to recognize that. For the last 33 years, the Beautification Commission has performed a very important role. Their advisory to the City Council and to the City in how we can look at beautification and environmental concerns. And we greatly appreciate that. We're here to honor the efforts of those who help make our community more beautiful <clears throat> and enhance. Farmington Hills is a great place to both live and work. Um, it was mentioned by Carol, and by the way, Carol Kurth, you need a, another a round of applause because you didn't get introduced. So let's please give Carol a round of applause. And I am joined here tonight. Um, uh, Valerie Knoll had been here. Um, she unfortunately had a little mechanical issue with uh, heating, so I had to leave for that. But our mayor pro tem. Mr. Richard Lerner is here as well because council does appreciate what you do. Tonight, recognition is going to go out to our businesses, a number of organizations, subdivisions, condominium and apartment entrances, places of worship, and more. All of these organizations and the people that work hard are doing it because they're passionate. Our community is ever evolving and the work of the Beautification Committee or Commission will continue to be a priority to us. What do people want when they look at communities? People want safe communities. They want great services. They want great schools. They want a community that cares. And they want one that is attractive and comfortable to be in. They want to be proud of where they live or where their business is. And it's not always easy to do this. Finances can sometimes be challenging. Priorities and, and the idea of shifting, if you think of a business, shifting from your bottom line to going out and making sure that your entrance is, is well planted. And in homeowners associations, and I know there are a number of homeowners associations represented here tonight, it's tough when you're trying to make those budgets uh, match to make sure that we look at those entrances. But it's important. We have to continue to plan it because our natural beauty is very much like the art. In, in all of our municipal buildings, our Arts Commission looks after what we have on the walls. And if you walk through this building, if you walk through the City Hall, you will see great works of art, all because those things they give us pleasure. Not everybody is going to look at plants and know what they are. I, I will be the first one to say <clears throat> that, um, unfortunately, it is my, my wife understands plants. And when she sends me out to do some weeding in the garden, I'm often told that I've pulled out something that was supposed to flower in a month, and I thought it was not necessarily um, an ornamental plant, but probably a weed, because I don't, I, I will just admit what I don't know. That said, people are passionate about art. People are passionate about the beauty of our natural surroundings. And that's why we have events like this. And that's why we have our Beautification Commission. To the point, earlier this year, in February to be exact, Time Money Magazine actually named Farmington Hills as the place to live, the best place to live in Michigan. This is, 
that, that is part of why we do what we do. I will admit that if you read the article closely, our sister city in Farmington was part of that because people from outside our area don't necessarily know where Farmington ends and Farmington Hills begins. So it's really a compliment to the entire region. <clears throat> but they saw the pride that we feel in our community. They understood what we are tr striving for. And that pride shows when you enter a subdivision or drive into a new business. Farmington Hills is a, is a place that deserves the designation as being a great place to live. And while I mention the beauty of subdivisions, Something that goes along with great, beautiful plantings at the entrances are also really nice roads. And for those of you who vote in the city of Farmington Hills, you may know <laughs> that there's a ballot question coming up, and that, is, uh, that was put on there because council listened to the voters. And if you want information on that, we do have some literature over on the, inter on the desk that has some frequently asked questions. So please feel free to educate yourself by picking those up and, uh, and we're all able to answer questions on that as well. But I do, I want to take the opportunity to make sure that you've seen that. So as we think about the winners tonight, you're thinking winners of people that are the companies or the subdivisions that are demonstrated the best. This is about continued excellence. And many of our winners tonight have been winners for the last decade. Those are actually noted in your programs with a little asterisk next to them. So you can see that that commitment to continued uh, beautification is there. So we want to recognize them. Tonight's special guest speaker is Cheryl English. She is the owner of Black Cat Pottery and also a company called the English Landscape. Cheryl has an extensive background in landscaping and contributing, and is a contributing writer to the Michigan Gardener and President Emeritus of the Master Gardeners of Greater Detroit. Tonight, she's going to share information on the pollinator preservation strategies. So I want to thank you all for attending this event tonight. Our sincere thanks go out to all of those who are winning prizes tonight, all of those who are receiving awards. I would like to say that we also want to extend our congratulations and our thanks to the other folks that maybe they didn't, weren't chosen as winners in this year's competition, but they also worked hard in maintaining our city as beautiful. So um, it, we should also especially appreciate those folks who serve on the Beautification Commission because you're really the you're the go-to people for us in the city to talk to and can, as we consider things that we can do. Truly, you help make Farmington Hills the best place to live in the, city, in the state of Michigan. Thank you. say good afternoon because it's not quite evening okay this is okay um, hello my name is Cheryl English I am the owner of black cat pottery I'm also an advanced master gardener out of Wayne County and a master com composter out of Macomb County I have served on various uh, in various capacities with a number of volunteer organizations including the greening of Detroit the Detroit Garden Center and I've served on the board of the wildflower Association of Michigan I tweaked this program uh, a little bit because I wanted to direct it more to the audience uh, that was described to me. And so I talked about the new fall cleanup. And I want to just, I come from a family of gardeners. Both of my parents were gardeners. My father was a, he, he was a guy who was going to have the first tomato on the block if it killed him. Um, and my mother was the one who was in charge of the ornamental plantings in, 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 in our yard. I was educated as an art historian and an archaeologist. So I'm a potter, a gardener, and an archaeologist. Everything I do is in the dirt and on my hands and knees. As an art historian, you have to do an entire survey of art history from what was happening in the Neolithic to what was going down on Soho, down in Soho last week. And although I was not a modernist in my educational goals, I did learn about the modernists in that capacity. And one of my favorite painters, artists really, was George O'Keefe. 
And I love what Georgia O'Keeffe has to say here, because what Georgia is talking about is she's talking about paying attention. When my nephews used to ask me years and years ago, Auntie Cheryl, how do you know so much? I would tell them that I read a lot. But that was really only half of the question as I later came to understand. The main thing is to pay attention when you're reading or walking. And you get to see amazing things when you do that. I also like this quote from Michael Pollan. And this is challenging in our current culture because the well-groomed turf is something that has become a societal norm and actually a standard by which people and their properties are measured. But the thing about typical turf is it's a completely artificial dynamic. It doesn't exist anywhere in nature. It harks back to the landed gentry of England and it's also driven by the onset of color television combined with the PGA Tour. <laughs> we want to have what's on going on at Pebble Beach, not realizing what the cost is. This is my property. I live on the east side of Detroit, within the city limits, close to Cadju and Mac, in, an, in a subdivision called East English Village. That's not why I moved there. And the, you can see the, the box is around my section. And it looks very, very different from everything else around it. Now, it's a pretty decent photograph. This is from Google Earth. And you can actually tell, looking at the photograph, that yes, my table is out on a small patch of grass I have in my backyard. And the four chairs are there. And the umbrella is down. So it's pretty darn good. I want to ask you, what is the difference between what's going on in my lot and what's going on around it? What was that? Well, there's lawn, there, but there's so much more. There's texture, and there's, there's life. There is a movement afoot in the United States and beyond toward embracing a more locally based gardening ethic. You can go from Portland, Maine to Portland, Michigan to Portland, Oregon and you can see the same exact plant palette being used. And these are not plants that come from here, meaning North America in most cases. You cannot tell where you are based on the plants you're seeing in the landscape. And what we're starting to see is an interest in planting according to not where we come from, and I come from places like French, Canada, French Canadian, Quebec, but more importantly, England, Scotland, Ireland, and France. And we, when we came here, and I came here, my family came here in 1620, we're not the earliest, we brought certain things with us. We brought our companion animals, we brought our livestock, which includes honeybees, we brought our, our, our agricultural plants, we brought our ornamental plants, we brought our diseases, we brought hitchhikers, including rats and fleas, which are not native here, and we also brought, most importantly, our cultural preconceptions, our ideas of how things should be. And they were based on where we came from and not based on what we observed when we arrived here. So what I am trying to do in my property, having gone through an entire dynamic from the day I moved in 23 years ago, and having hostas and daylilies and more, much more typical plants, to embracing a dynamic where I am planting according to where I live in Michigan. And there are a few things that I do to accommodate that. Um, Heather Holm wrote a great book on native plants and their relationships with pollinators. And she talks about strategies for maintaining a garden that is welcoming to pollinators. Now the thing about this, these are things that are welcoming to pollinators, but they're not just going to support pollinators. These are techniques and approaches that actually f foster a healthy landscape, a truly healthy landscape a landscape that is alive and provides life. 
I came to the realization through my reading, my conversations with other people, my observations in my garden, paying attention to these things, and extrapolating and synthesizing those inputs and realizing that I had a desert in my yard because none of the plants I was growing from a white fountain's weeping white cherry tree to a white rhododendron to a still bees and hostas and daylilies and the list goes on, there was nothing to eat for any of the insects that evolved here, from monarch butterflies to sphinx moths. And I was spending a lot of money and time trying to get things to grow that didn't really belong here. So I embraced a dynamic of introducing and including native plants. And there are moments in my yard, maybe brief, infrequent, where I can sit in my backyard and I can only hear the sounds of the wind through the trees, the birds, and the insects nectaring on my plants. For a moment, there are no bar dogs barking, there are no cars honking, there are no other city-fied man-made noises, and it's extraordinary, it's transporting. The way I've done this is by finding out what grew here and has grown here for eons. The critical relationships in our ecosystems consist of the relationships between plants and the insects that feed on them. Plants are the only organisms that can make their own food. If I go out in the sun and I don't drink my water or put on my 73 SPF sunscreen, I'm going to end up in the hospital. But a tree takes that sunlight, that same sunlight, and converts it into food. And the insects are what are converting that food into available protein. They are the bedrock, the plants and the insects, for our ecosystem. More and more municipalities, more and more people, homeowners, are beginning to embrace the idea that the way we've been gardening, really when you get down to it for 5,000 years, isn't working very well. For 5,000 years we have gardened for our own edification. We've moved plants around. We've used techniques and chemicals and ways to meet an agenda we've created for ourselves. And we're finding that's not working very well. And we're looking for ways to do it better because better for the environment ends up being better for us. The photos you're seeing were taken in my garden, all of them, by my friend Don Schulte. They are all native plants, Michigan native plants. And the insects are all native insects. And they are a, a small cross-section of what I've worked with in my property and what I have observed using my property. I don't use any pesticides except in very specific limited contexts. Uh, only if it's to treat a specific plant in such a way that we will be able to treat it for a, a constrained period of time and make it then available again to provide its ecological services. I have a dogwood that has anthracnose and borer. Those are both going to be chronic conditions that would require perpetual treatment with chemicals, which would render that tree inedible. So I'm not treating that tree. I will let the tree live out its life, and when it's dead, I'll remove it, maybe. Maybe I'll leave it, because it provides habitat even when it's dead. A red bud that had scale, I did treat because that is a condition that could be cured in a season, and then the tree could come back online and be used by our native leafcutter bees in making baby blankets. So it's a cost-benefit analysis. And this is a concept we all understand in terms of what we are trying to do with our landscapes, regardless of how we are using them and how we are interacting with them. What am I going to get out of this thing that I'm thinking of doing? And the benefit I have accrued from this strategy has been immeasurable. I don't spend as much money on things that are toxic for the environment and for myself. I don't use any power tools. I have a real mower that I use about three times a year. I'm not a big turf person. Mowing the lawn's like doing vacuuming outside. 
It's just gonna need, need to be done again. Um, and I'm at the point in my garden where I'm not doing a whole lot of work other than editing and deciding what needs to go and who's not playing well with others. I welcome the wildlife. I have a bunny. My cats have told me this. <laughs> they announce when there's someone out there and their communications are very specific to who they're seeing. Rufus gets very upset about the bunny, but there is a bunny. And if the bunny decides that he's going to chew down a certain plant in my garden, then I might put a cage around it because the bunny has 199 other things to eat and they all taste really, really good. And so he has a, he's got a smorgasbord. I have had possums. Possums are tremendously important in our environment. Does anyone know why possums are so important? Ticks, exactly. They are tick vacuums. Ticks are native, fleas are not. I've had a family of raccoons. I had a family of six raccoons, a mama and five kits at my fountain early this year. And one of them, who figured out how to get up on the fountain and stuck his face in it, came back in September and paid us a visit. Made sure the fountain was still working. I'd kept it up, we were good. I wish I could have a skunk, but I don't think there's gonna be one around in my neighborhood with all the dogs. We have flickers, I've had pileated woodpeckers in my yard, now the largest woodpecker in North America with the demise of the ivory bill. I have giant swallowtail butterflies, monarch butterflies, cecropia moths, the largest moth of North America in my yard because of my strategies that I have learned to welcome the life into my yard. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cheryl. I now have a woodpecker goal. I don't have one of those. <laughs> I'm Jennifer Chin. I'm a member of the Beautification Commission. Farmington Hills is a beautiful city that I'm proud to call home. It's due in part to the businesses, landscape contractors, employees, volunteers, and individuals who work so hard to care for and improve their properties. The Beautification Commission is pleased to honor some of them tonight. We'll be presenting the awards in categories, so please hold your applause until the end of each category, and I'll let you know. Award winners, feel free to pick up your certificate from the table over to my right, anytime after your name's called, to avoid a lineup at the end, and look for a card inside. You'll trade that card on your way out for your yard sign, or business sign. We'll start tonight with the category of offices. These honorees have gone the extra mile to provide both attractive landscaping for their public areas and wonderful spaces for their employees to enjoy. Arboretum on 12 Mile is a larger property that does a great job of making use of trees and hardscaping, such as boulders, to divine, define spaces and add pockets of peacefulness throughout the property. Annuals in pink, red, silver, and yellow not only add a jolt of color, but are helpful in accenting areas like entrances to the visitors employ and employees. Brookfield One on Northwestern Highway used pink begonias throughout to uh, bring together the va various landscaped areas. A lovely courtyard filled with unique hostas, grasses, daylilies, hydrangeas trained as trees, and of course the pink begonias is a highlight of their design. Pink begonias were also planted next door at Brookfield 2, creating a nice synergy between the two properties. Entrances were well cared for, and employees have a lovely break, order, break area surrounded by high grasses to create a bit of privacy. An especially nice touch was a shaded path that led through some river birches to a restful bench. At the entrance of Brookfield 3, off Middle Belt, the use of pink and purple petunias is a unique and fun way to define the circular drive entrance. Around back, river birches reflect off the mirrored glass, and even the lobby, in this case, was filled with plants. Doctors David M. Clark and Carolyn L. Romrick have created space around their dental office at 12 Mile and Middle Belt that feels like a relaxing backyard. 
opening with cheerful marigolds at the front sign and a fountain surrounded by roses and continuing to the side garden designed to be viewed from the treatment rooms, the care and time invested in making patients feel comfortable and welcome is obvious. The front sign at Farmington Hills Corporate Center 1 on Haggerty Road was planted with a lush bed of begonias which looked very welcoming when seen from the road. Additional beds throughout were well cared for and featured evergreens, hostas, small trees, grass grasses, and impatience. Just north at Farmington Hills Corporate Center 2, silver was used to enhance the pink begonias. What stood out, especially for an office setting, was the variety employed in their perennial plantings. This variety continued to the choice of trees, such as a red maple, red bud, and honey locust. Friedman Real Estate at 12 Mile and Drake was filled with flowers. The island beds were a bright combination of both annuals and perennials in pink, purple, and yellow that really popped against the spotless walks and freshly painted parking spots. Northwestern Highway is fortunate to have many well-maintained offices, including the next three. North Valley 1 and 2 have a woodland vibe happening. Tall trees, boulders, and interesting foliage, such as that from variegated hostas, create a park-like setting, which is further enhanced by the use of shrubs along a retaining wall and at a side entrance. A brilliant bed of black-eyed Susans and lovely red and white begonias surrounded the front signs with bursts of color. Nottingham Associates featured welcoming plantings at every entrance, and judges noted that the landscaping was especially well-maintained. A large patch of lush grasses stood out as a really interesting touch. Spectrum Office Center kept things simple, clean, and well-groomed. A peaceful front entrance was filled with hostas and red and white begonias. While the abundant daylilies were not in bloom during judging, the plantings at the entrances suggested a look that changes throughout the seasons with lots of future color to come. Heading north to 14 Mile, Ward Eagle includes both historic and modern buildings, and the lush plantings complement this well. Trees and gorgeous hydrangeas provide a foundation for red and white annuals and some seriously huge hostas. Please join me in applauding the accomplishments in the category of offices. <laughs> Next up is shopping centers. And while I love being in stores, these two honorees made the outside equally enjoyable. Hunter's Square at Orchard Lake and 14 Mile featured lovely beds of mugo pines, roses, daylilies, and at the entrances and islands. Pots filled with arborvitae and annuals brightened up the sidewalks. Marketplace Specialty Center on Orchard Lake near 13 Mile had a pretty mix of annuals and perennials. Large rocks defined the planting beds and provided structure to the abundance of color. Please take a moment to applaud our shopping centers. In the category of renovations and environmental sensitivity, two properties stood out. For environmental sensitivity, the Finnish Center Association and the Finlandia Gardens, located on 8 Mile, are community focused. They include being designated as an official MSU gardener volunteer location, working with Boy Scouts on projects, and remaining open to the public throughout the year. Environmental initiatives include recycling, composting, rainwater collection, and replacing annuals with perennials and succulents to reduce watering and weeding requirements. Judges commented on the beautiful designs and the tranquility throughout. At Malle Industries Incorporated on Haggerty Road, recently, they recently completed a renovation that included an outdoor patio and a sitting wall for both employees and visitors to enjoy. The stone patio is Oaks Rialto marble in gray and is textured with a high solar reflectance that meets lead requirements. The wall is Unilock Linneo dimensional stone in midnight charcoal with a natural limestone cap. Judges also observed well-maintained perennials, shrubs, and soft flowing grasses that rounded out their landscape. Let's congratulate them on their excellent work. <laughs> now I'm pleased to introduce Mary Martin, the Executive Director of the Greater Farmington Area Chamber of Commerce, to present the Chamber of Commerce Award. Thank you, everyone. Um, the Chamber of Commerce is a business organization uh, of members of businesses within the Farmington, Farmington Hills area. 
Uh, this year, we, we have um, chosen Friedman Real Estate as the Beautification Award win winner from the Chamber. I'd like to tell you a few things about Cheryl Tice, who is the, the person who has um, <laughs> awarded for uh, doing such a great job with the business. Cheryl's been doing landscaping and maintaining gardens for over 25 years. She has services, she services 21 commercial properties and two residences. Over the course of her gardening years, Cheryl, Cheryl has received more than 225 awards. In 2010, she purchased a distressed home in Farmington Hills and worked her magic and received the Keep Michigan um, Beautiful Award that year for improvements that were made. Cheryl works alone and has plants between 850 and 1,000 flats of annuals each year. And in the spring, uh, in the spring, and then in the, in the fall, she plants over 550 mums. She's a very busy woman. <laughs> Her work at the Friedman location, as you've heard, included several island beds, which incorporated annuals and perennials in lovely pink, purple, and yellow displays. Um, at this time, I would like to invite Cheryl, Tice, and members of uh, Friedman Real Estate to come up and receive the award. My name is Stan Finsilver. I'm a partner in Friedman, and <clears throat> I just need to say this, that Cheryl and I, 34 years ago, used to plant stuff together. I stopped 33 years ago, and she continued, and she plants, um, you, you heard several office buildings. I think eight of those office buildings were Friedman uh, properties, all of which Cheryl plants. She does, she actually is a property manager, and she takes weeks off to do all of our plantings, and we're, we miss her, but we allow her to do that because she does such a wonderful job and has for so many years. So thank you for, for us, and thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, congratulations to Friedman. Farmington Hills is proud to have so many successful businesses in our city, and we're fortunate that so many of them are also beautifully maintained and landscaped. Attendance on demand in photonics at Nine Mile and Haggerty stood out to our judges as having an abundance of flowers, which is an impressive feat when you consider the amount of flowers we look at during the judging. Employees maintain the front entrance and get to enjoy a back patio and a new Frisbee golf hole added on employee field day. Botsford Commons, a Beaumont community at Folsom and Tuck Road, has many smaller gardens along with one larger garden in the center. The foliage plants dominated in many hues of green. The overall effect is very restful and relaxing for the seniors who reside there. A lush, beautiful container garden at the entrance of Cafe Cortina on 10 Mile really impressed the judges. In addition, gorgeous hydrangeas surround the outdoor eating area supported by shrubs, perennials, and annuals. The mature, meticulously maintained perennial gardens at Earhart BMW include grasses, roses, and daylilies. Bright pink begonias adds flashes of color to this dealership located on Grand River Avenue. Fabian, Scar, King, and Liss Law Office on 12 Mile Road use mature trees and shrubbery as a backdrop for beds of annuals and perennials. Of note were the huge grasses and overflowing containers. The beautifully kept gardens of Halstead Place on 13 Mile and Halstead included a mix of grasses and perennials along with a few well-placed annuals. Look at the size of the Annabelle hydrangeas right there. <laughs> Illuminating Concepts Gardens are maintained by two employees who have included unique artwork and containers into the design. Judges commented on the well-trimmed shrubs, excellent maintenance overall at this 10 Mile and Orchard Lake business. Plantings included grasses, perennials like hosta and daylily, and annuals like red begonias. The recently remodeled La Fontaine Volvo Cars of Farmington Hills welcomes visitors off Haggerty Road with a boulevard entrance garden filled with hostas and roses. Also of note were hedges of young boxwood and abundantly blooming black-eyed Susans. The Land Rover Jaguar dealership on Grand River Road 
made excellent use of black-eyed Susans, pink and white begonias, and hylotalifium, autumn joy, which we all used to call upright sedum, and it's much easier to say. <laughs> large clumps of grasses added motion to the gardens, offsetting the structure provided by large boulders. McLean, Proppy, McLean, and Darrell PC does business from an 1840s area farmhouse on 12 Mile Road. The mature gardens were designed to be a reprieve from the pavement that surrounds them. The judges thought they did just that. Robert Bosch LLC on Hills Tech Drive is dedicated to sustainable landscaping and has incorporated prairie installations using native plantings. Judges especially liked how the solar panels were softened by the lush bed of red begonias. Volunteers assist with the maintenance on these lovely gardens. On Grand River Avenue, Sellers Buick GMC has incorporated grasses, black-eyed Susans, and multicolor begonias into an inviting display. Many large stones border the gardens, adding interest and structure. In addition, a letter of commendation is presented to Lucky's Collision. Please give our businesses a round of applause. All of the gardens in our next category, Places of Worship, are maintained by volunteers, which makes their landscapes that much more impressive. Narden Park United Methodist Church, located on 11 Mile, featured several beds with a large variety of perennials, complemented by pops of annual color. The judges noted that the shrubs were also beautifully maintained and many trees provided wonderful areas of shade. From Farmington Road, visitors to Orchard United Methodist Church will see a well-maintained entrance and parking lot, plus a low fence to the south wing of the building, which just hints at what can be found inside. Within the rooms of the Tranquility Garden, there's a fountain surrounded by assorted perennials, grasses, and shrubs, featuring a sylvie, cone flowers, Russian sage, daisies, roses, hostas, and hardy hibiscus, just to name a few. Care was taken to provide for sustainability and beauty in all four seasons. St. Fabian Catholic Church and School is an oasis. Their grounds feature a wide assortment of brightly colored annuals and perennials, tranquil fountains, and well-placed statues. I can personally attest to the fact that these gardens have brought joy to at least one person who was stuck in traffic on 12 Mile and Orchard Lake. <laughs> hmm. Congratulations to our places of worship. We have one honoree in the category of apartment entrances, but it's a good one. Carrington Place Apartments on Freedom Road made a great first impression with a lovely, well-maintained entrance and sign. This led to a bright island of trees, daylilies, and annuals in several shades of pinks. Put your hands together for Carrington Place. I'm now gonna turn things over to Carol Posby, our commission chair, who will continue with the awards. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Carol Posby, chairperson of the Farmington Hills Beautification Commission. We have a new category this year to recognize neighborhoods that are making a difference through their efforts to keep our city clean, green, and beautiful. In 2012, the Beautification Commission initiated a litter cleanup day in conjunction with Earth Day to encourage people to focus on the environment. Subdivisions and neighborhoods were encouraged to form teams of volunteers to pick up the trash that had collected along the roads adjacent to their neighborhoods during the winter months. These are some of the over 150 people from 17 neighborhoods that participated in the 2018 Litter Cleanup Day. We especially tonight want to recognize the neighborhoods that have participated all six years with teams of over five people. We have the Deerfield Street Team, the Folsom Road Team, Forest Hills, Franklin Knowles, Holly Hill Farms, Hunt Club, the Pillsbury Road, Road Team, and West Franklin Estates. We thank these neighborhoods for their efforts to maintain the beauty and environment of our great city. 
If you are interested in forming a litter walk cleanup team for, for 2019, please speak with the commissioner this evening or contact City Hall for additional information. Now, I am very pleased to take you on a tour that highlights some very impressive sites within our city. My first category recognizes the outstanding efforts of subdivisions. We have a lovely eye-catching entrance at the Applebrook subdivision on Halstead, north of Eight Mile Road. Large hostas, petunias, sedum, daylilies stand out against the neatly manicured boxwood hedge with decorative black rock mulch and stacked rocks. There are flowering bush hydrangeas, evergreens, and pines on two islands behind the gray stone signs at both entrances. Barrington Green on 12 Mile and Drake Road has used a range of beautiful perennials in several entrance islands. The plantings include coneflowers, Russian sage, spirea, gardelia, rubecchia, burning bush, and neatly trimmed yews and ornamental grasses. A graystone entrance marker is displayed by Colony Park West 3 on Drake between 12 and 13 mile roads. There are bountiful bright annuals in front of the entrance marker, which is surrounded by very large decorative stones. It is even more impressive because all of the design and work is done by residents of the neighborhood and was redesigned this year. Dunbar Oaks provides a very eye-catching display for their entrance on 12 Mile Road west of Drake. There are stone entrance signs on both sides of their entrance with large groupings of black-eyed Susans, rose bushes, bountiful multicolored begonias, and trimmed bushes. There are several large dogwood bushes in the center island with even more black-eyed Susans and red begonias with a boxwood border. Farmington Brook, located on Haggerty, north of 12 Mile Road, has a lovely center island with ornamental trees, meticulously trimmed bushes, hydrangeas, ornamental grasses, and black-eyed Susans, along with bountiful red begonias and purple argeritum. Particularly unique is the entrance marker itself. It's a very large boulder with the name of the subdivision etched right into the boulder. What a bright splash of color is displayed at the entrance to, Far to Farmington Ridge Glens on 13 Mile Road between Halstead and Haggerty Roads. The center boulevard island has low manicured trees and ornamental grass along with a bright array of flowers including red, pink, and white begonias, black-eyed Susans, rose bushes, zinnias that brighten both sides of the entrance. The Farmington Square subdivision at Halstead north of Nine Mile Road maintains four entrances, two on Halstead and two on Nine Mile Road, which are all maintained by volunteers. Rose bushes, hydrangeas, black-eyed Susans provide colorful blooms throughout the summer. Also, zebra grass, hostas, boxwood, coral bells, and autumn joy are surrounded by cedar mulch. Large rocks separate the garden from the grass to give a pleasing border. Green Hill Woods has a long brick wall with carriage lights at their entrance on Nine Mile Road east of Halstead. There is a circular island with a matching brick border. The plantings in the island include nicely trimmed boxwoods, rose bushes, and colorful annual flowers. Majestic pines and spruce trees on both sides of the entrance provide a finishing touch. Halstead Hills on Halstead Road north of 12 Mile Road has an impressive natural stone marker that is behind a bed of low and flowering bushes and bordered by bountiful pink, white, and red begonias. The circular bed on one side of the entrance has large boulders, creeping juniper, spirea, hostas, ornamental grasses, and large white blooms on hydrangea bushes. The other side is accented by a flowering crab apple tree. Holly Hill Farms has established an entrance, entrance design that utilizes black-eyed Susans and marigolds to set off their green entrance sign. 
A striking array of colors greets you on both sides of the entrance with zebra grasses and a bit of holly mixed in. There is, this is a well thought out design of daylilies, hostas, sedum, zinnias, petunias, and marigold blooms. Hunt Club on 11 Mile Road east of Halstead features two islands at the entrance to their neighborhood. The front island has a large stone entrance marker with many large hostas and a border of ornamental grasses, bayberry, boxwood, and hydrangeas. The second island has a large grouping of black-eyed Susans, natural grasses, and red begonias. There are additional plantings of daylilies, hostas, sedum, and tea roses, all providing a lovely entrance to their community. Residents and motorists in the area of 13 Mile Road between Halstead and Drake Roads are greeted by the large hostas, spirea, ornamental grasses, and rubecchia at both entrances to Hunters Point Colony Subdivision. In front of the brick entrance sign, there is a border of red begonias with daylilies, low-trimmed yews, and large hostas. A side island has a border of large boulders with even more daylilies and bright colored begonias. Old Franklin Town on Middle Belt, north of Northwestern Highway, has a charming entrance with a working water wheel in the pond adjacent to the entrance, providing a lovely rustic look to the entire area. In front of the pond is sedum, Russian sage, yucca plants, and very large weeping willow trees, along with large hostas, black-eyed Susans, daylilies, and daisies. Snowballs, black-eyed Susans, and rose bushes under an ornamental tree set off the entrance marker and continue along the entrance road. Oxford Estates has the very distinctive feature of having a lovely pond with a fountain on the north side of the entrance on Drake between 11 and 12 mile roads. There are bountiful mounds of bright pink begonias and purple salvia with hostas and very neatly trimmed bushes that provide a lovely landscape. Rolling Oaks has several entrances to their subdivision, and there are several islands at each entrance. These pictures were taken at the entrance on 14 Mile Road between Drake and Farmington Road. The entrance sign is enhanced by large hydrangeas in full bloom. Behind the sign is an island with red begonias and purple salvia. Another island has tiers of purple alyssum, red begonias, pachysandra, and hydrangeas. There is an additional side island with white and red begonias with a stone border. Much work and care goes into this picture-perfect entrance. The Strathmore subdivision has certainly put their creativity to work in creating a unique design for their landscape. There is always a bright display of flowers at the top of the slope at the intersection of 13 Mile and Haggerty Roads. The entrance at Glenbrook has spiral shrubs, evergreens, large hostas, pink and white begonias, and large boulders to provide an inviting entrance. An entrance sign with an impressive stone border is accented with bright pink and white flowers and a backdrop of majestic trees is at the entrance on 13 Mile Road. Strathmore is also a volunteer effort contributing to the unique design along with the planting and the maintenance. Stratton Hill has a very well manicured boulevard entrance on Drake north of 13 Mile Road. The center island has pink, white, and red begonias, ornamental grasses, black-eyed Susans, and low bushes. Large spruce trees, blooming hostas, red begonias, and boulders enhance the side islands. What a lovely display of bright flowers and manicured shrubs is shown at the entrance to the Trillium subdivision on Drake, south of 12 Mile Road. Decorative urns with pink New Guinea impatience and sweet potato vines grace the two islands in the center of the boulevard entrance. Boxwood shrubs and bayberry bushes are trimmed to establish a tiered effect that pro provides a distinctive border to very large white hydrangeas. There are several medians with displays of hydrangeas, 
daylilies, begonias, and ornamental grasses. It is all very eye-catching and very eye-pleasing. Whispering Woods on Halstead, north of 12 Mile Road, has two large stone markers with carriage lights on both sides of their boulevard entrance. Large pine trees are behind the entrance signs with ornamental grasses on the sides and pink blooms in front. A front island has additional grasses and white blooming begonias. There is a well-maintained nature area to, area to the side of the entrance road. Woodland Trails on 13 Mile Road between Halstead and Drake has very effectively used ornamental grasses and well-trimmed yews on one side of the entrance as a border for pink, red, and white begonias in front of the stone entrance marker. The other side has even more beautiful begonias, coral bells, and oak leaf hydrangeas, all very neatly trimmed and very well maintained. Please, a round of applause for these beautiful subdivisions within our neighborhood. Each year, the Beautification Commission selects one of our nominees that we feel best exemplifies a real commitment for enhancing our environment and our, the beauty of our city. And we acknowledge this outstanding effort with the Beautification Commissioner Award. I would like to ask Rita Roberts, Beautification Commissioner, to please come up here and present that award. Thank you, Carol. Before I begin, I would like to thank my fellow commissioners for allowing me to present this award because it's to my subdivision, so I'm really pleased. Commissioner's Award this year goes to Holly Hill Farms. Holly Hills has been a part of our community for over 60 years. Uh, we've been consistent award winners for our inviting and interesting entrances, but more importantly, we have a program within the subdivision that recognizes homeowners who rehab, paint, just do all sorts of things, who in any way have enhanced the appearance or the environment of our subdivision. We have participated in all of the litter walks, uh, cleaning up along 13 mile, be on Middle Belt rather, south of 13 mile. So it is my pleasure and my joy to present this award. I think, Wanda, if you'll come up, please. Oh, and Ken. Hi, didn't see you, come in. And it is my pleasure and joy. Thank you. Thank you. Would you so like much. to say something? Yes, I, I would. Wanda, thank you. Yes. Uh, hello, my name's uh, Ken Snodgrass, a, a longtime resident of Holly Hill Farms and the city of Farmington Hills. And first, I'd like to thank the Beautification Commission for this wonderful award. Thank you, Rita, and everyone else. I'd also like to say, watching and looking at all these photographs and driving around our city, there's a lot of other properties who are certainly worthy of this recognition. So we're really pleased to have received it. Uh, I'd just like to say two things. Uh, our goal for our entrances is for when our residents approach them driving up Middle Belt, maybe they let out a little sigh and maybe they think, I'm really glad to be home. I'm really glad this is our home. The second thing is, when everyone else driving by Middle Belt sees our entrances and the landscaping we do, I hope they think, Holly Hill Farms must be a pleasant place to live. So that's our goal, and thank you for recognizing it. I would like to say thank you very much. This is a real honor. I think Holly Hill Farms is a great place to live. Farmington Hills is a great place to live. 
It's such a wonderful state. And I would like to say thank you to my grandson, who also helped me with a lot of work. Thank you very much. <laughs> Congratulations again to Holly Hills on, uh, the on this recognition. Next, let us take a tour of the outstanding condominium entrances throughout our city. Chestnut Ridge is located on Halstead Road, north of 12 Mile Road, and has a long natural stone wall with copper top pillars that provide a backdrop for a large display of beautiful red and white New Guinea patients in front of low use. The sides of the entrance have bushes, ornamental grasses, hostas, and a bed of magenta New Guinea patients. Behind the stone wall is a large island with bright yellow daylilies and white blooming hydrangeas and a large bed of lavender and patience bordered by hostas. The residents of Chestnut Ridge are especially proud of the white pines, spruces, and fir trees that line both sides of the entrance roads and extend the entire front of the complex along Halstead Road. The impressive boulevard entrance to Copper Creek on 12 Mile Road west of Halstead has a stone entrance marker that is set off with beautiful bright pink begonias and plantings of daylilies and shrubs continue down the boulevard and are also in a second island. Side entrances have large islands of black-eyed Susans, rose bushes and ornamental grasses, all beautifully maintained. Essex Club has certainly created an entrance that complements the environment and is an exceptional show of beautiful landscaping at its entrance on Halstead, north of 12 Mile Road. The large retention pond has a fountain and is surrounded by majestic pines, spruces, and fir trees. The large center island has a meticulously trimmed boxwood hedge providing a distinctive border for autumn joy, sedum, daylilies and hostas. In the side islands, there is a wide range of flowering plants, including pink and white begonias, alyssum, and red rose bushes. As you enter the boulevard entrance of Fairways of Farmington Hills, located on Halstead, north of 11 Mile Road, you are greeted by an island with large mounds of pink and white begonias, magenta New Guinea patients, purple salvia, and trimmed yews in front of the stone and granite entrance marker. The boulevard is lined with red shrub rose bushes, hydrangeas, and large yellow and red calla lilies. The mailbox area has beds of deep pink begonias, blue salvia, day lilies, and ornamental grasses. Hydrangeas and small crab apple trees add to the appeal in the, in the total landscape. Greenpoint at Copper Creek has a lovely array of blooming flowers welcoming people to their neighborhood and catching the attention of people on 13 Mile west of Halstead. A long stone entrance marker with a distinctive gold lettering is behind bountiful arrangements of bright black-eyed Susans. Autumn Joy, pink and white petunias, and red roses and creeping juniper complete the landscape. There are several large boulders which further enhance and beautify. Hampshire House on 14 Mile Road west of Orchard Lake has an inviting entrance bed of pink begonias with a white begonia border in front of the entrance sign. Orange zinnias, dusty miller, and blue salvia complete the look. A bed of myrtle surrounded by more begonias provides an inviting design at the entrance drive. And a center bed has red, white, and pink begonias, turtle head shrubs, and daylilies. The entrance at Heatherwood on Middle Belt, north of 12 Mile Road, has a combination of low trees and trimmed boxwood, New Guinea patients, hostas, black eyed Susans, and an ornamental grasses to enhance the front of their entrance island. The rear island has large blooming hydrangeas, bushes, and bright pink begonias. There are also islands to the side of the entrance that further extend the lovely look with rose bushes, large coral bell, blooming hydrangeas, and bright pink geraniums. 
Meadow Ridge, a middle belt between 11 and 12 mile roads, has a lovely and environmentally conscious focus to their entrance and grounds. A pleasing combination of hostas, bright black-eyed Susans, coral bells, and ornamental grasses surround the brick entrance sign. Abundant Stelladoro daylilies and pink and white begonias are immediately visible at the entrance. A beautiful pond with, with a fountain is surrounded by many large trees, and the north berm is planted with wildflowers to maintain the natural beauty of the environment. A border of boulders sets off the entrance marker and adds to the colorful and appealing look of this entrance. Bramblewood on 14 Mile Road east of Halstead has used mounds of white New Guinea impatience, blue salvia, red, white, and pink begonias, large yellow canna, yellow canna lilies, and neatly trimmed bushes to create an eye-catching center island for their entrance. This is continued to the side islands with ornamental grasses, deep pink New Guinea impatience, blue salvia, and stelladora lilies. All of this enhance, is enhanced further by the lovely trees that frame the entrance. We are also pleased to present letters of commendation to River Pines and Sierra Point. A round of applause for these beautiful condominiums. I would now like to introduce Michael Hagerty, co-chair of the Historic District Commission, to present the Ruth Molman Preservation Award. Good evening. My name is Michael Hagerty. Uh, standing to my right is Chris, Chris Bidegar, uh, he is the proud owner of the Arnold House located on Drake Road between 11 and 12 Mile. Uh, Chris started his journey in finishing the rehabilitation of this home approximately about three and a half years ago. Three and a half years ago. Um, on behalf of the commission, I am proud to award this certificate to him. Uh, the work, he had hard work and effort that he has put in to this fine home and addition to the city of Farmington Hills. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So a few words about it. I was, uh, oh, awesome, thank you. I was actually hoping uh, nobody was gonna bring up how many years it took to get it done. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's um, quite a uh, accomplishment if you go down Drake Road and you see that. Um, it's been a labor of love and uh, um, looking forward to finishing up the four. If you've been by there, and which everybody always asks, what are those posts that are still sticking out of the ground? Oh, look, everyone's nodding their head. <laughs> um, it's going to be a little canopy area that's going to kind of connect to the garage, but maybe this fall you'll see it. <laughs> Thank you. Just, just so you, just to give you a little context here. Um, so the, the, the green part of the house was the old part. The additions onto the right, anywhere where there's um, cedar unfinished siding. And in the backyard, that used to be the shed. So the house was built in 1837. In the backyard, the shed to your lower right was detached. That was always there. That was built like in the late 1800s. I, I think like 1890 something, I understand. And then I put an addition to attach, uh, to attach the two and the shed is now like the master bathroom. It's, it's pretty neat. Thank you. Well, I think begonias and black-eyed Susans, or Rubeckia, if you wish, uh, have found a home in Farmington Hills. <laughs> In closing our program, I would like to give special thank you to the planning and community development staff, most uh, especially our city liaison, Charmaine, and assistant, Jerry LaBelle. Also, the staff at Special Services and Video Division for helping us with this ceremony, its preparation and presentation 
and I assume that somewhere along the line between now and Thanksgiving or Christmas, uh, you'll see it on TV if you missed any words. We especially appreciate the help, uh, all of the help of the center, uh, Caustic Center staff. Commissioner Betty Poole has also, again, shared our awards program. She's also the head of the gar head gardener at the Warner Mansion uh, in Farmington, and she's president of the Farmington Garden Club. Now, these beautiful centerpieces, uh, specially designed and presented here tonight by Nan Reed. Uh, whose company is just for just for you flowers will belong to the guest at the table whose birthday is closest to Thanksgiving November 22nd so keep up the good work everyone that's here I hope you've all visited the table for your award and have a safe trip home.